So, welcome here in our hospital in Darmstadt, the Klinikum Darmstadt, where we'll uh, treat a patient with a right cornea occlusion. He's um, 59, 58 to 59 years old. He has symptoms of dyspnea for about five years during exercise. And uh, about th two to three months ago, he underwent a coronary angio where a coronary three vessel disease was diagnosed with RCA occlusion in the mid segment, about 25, 30 millimeters, which is our target lesion because he has severe ischemia on um, myocardial scintigraphy in this area. He has an additional distal uh, circ occlusion and an uh, insignificant LED lesion. Uh, our strategy will be to try to get a radial and femoral access, bilateral imaging. The right coronary will be tackled from the femoral axis. The radial axis is for the left system uh, to provide us some uh, retrograde diagnostic imaging. If we fail anti-grade, we would revert to a retrograde strategy via collateral. So first I will do the radial axis. So the idea here is the cap is right at the takeoff of the side branch and there is a high likelihood that this is immediately uh, the going into the false channel. Yeah. So I want to visualize if possible with IVUS into the side branch, the proximal cap of the lesion. So that's the plan to use IVUS in imaging of the proximal cap to see which wire we should use. It's a little bit tricky, it's not the typical ideal position for IVUS guided entry, but we'll do it try to gain some information here because otherwise we are in at risk of getting into the collateral into the bridging collateral and not into the artery removing this microcatheter I want to trap the wire and then we put an ibis on this catheter to analyze it will be interesting to see the proximal size of the vessel which looks so tiny for a regularly sized man so this is exactly a uh, three and a half millimeter negative remodeling no positive remodeling and here is the artery four millimeters a lot of black and we are not able to pass into the side branch here it's a very challenging situation here for any IVUS, I think. Uh, there is a high likelihood I lose the position. So this is a huge artery. So we have a four millimeter vessel. I record here. Not much calcium. So I would opt for, um, stop, for a straightforward anti-grade wiring with the Gaia family wire. So the, the IBIS uh, image, if we play it back, is very interesting because distal, we have a four millimeter vessel. So there is positive remodeling and proximal down. We have a um, plaque load obstructing the lumen, but actually no real uh, remodeling effect. So the lesion is prob probably, prox uh, probably in the middle of the artery. So the plan is when we have a vessel of four millimeter diameter on a relatively straight segment here to try wire wiring and then if the wire is subintimal try parallel wiring. The wire advances easily Uh, 
question is, is it intimal or sub-intimal? And it feels like the wires, the whole system is backing out. So what we do is do parallel wiring here. We want to exit here and go parallel down just the first wire is not far off the target I just use it as a rail and see whether we go a little bit a different pathway this is too much of a difference I want it to go a little bit to the right but this is too much right this would be okay I think that looks good and that mm -hmm. well we advance here but I'm not quite sure whether it's correct let's hope that we get some distal filling here. Uh, looks good. Mm. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Then try to slide this wire despite being a confianza 9 in a sliding technique down reducing the friction. further down here straight now it goes into the side branch okay so it doesn't look too bad but do we have a true lumen crossing or a dissection crossing that's the decisive question uh, a sub intimal crossing and re-entry so first thing is to now exchange this stiff confianza to a softer floppy wire because we don't want to make any damage there so we have still our anchor uh, trapping balloon in place so we take the fine cross and trap the 2.5 balloon in the guiding catheter well I advance to hold the confianza so it doesn't slip forward while I advance the fine cross. So we don't give any anti-grade injection here. We have Ivis on the table. We don't want to propagate a dissection. We can take out the Gaia now and we just have our Sion Blue. Then we give heparin. So the interesting part now comes with the Ivis yep, to understand in such a diffuse long lesion especially where the distal vessel is uh, shrunken where to put stents uh, try to avoid unnecessary stents when we have simple vessel shrinkage but put stents wherever we have a lot of black load so definitely we have to go until the ostium here cover the ostium So we watch the Ivis coming, ring down again, and once more. We're curious. So now we enter into the lesion. This is circular calcium or semicircular calcium. We are still within the black. And probably here we might be subintimal. We are subintimal. And here we come back into the lumen. So this is definitely luminal but it's a long and diseased artery. Okay, let's start record from distal. It's diffused, diseased here. But here, where is the crux? 
That might be the crux. That might be a landing zone for us. Let's I'll just record this as a possible landing zone. Still smallish artery there. Well, we know that the occlusion might have lasted for many, many years, and now we are subintimal. So this time the parallel wiring was subintimal. Here we are again in the plaque, and we did uh, distal reentry with a confianza here, and a lot of amorphous plaque. Very far distal. Don't want to go beyond the crux, but there, I think, before this calcium here should be, there is a side branch, and here is probably a 3 0 balloon, a 3 0 stent to be placed. 3038 signs. So we take the 3 0 38. Nobody would have done a 3-0, I think, in this distal segment, otherwise without either. If you look at the artery and decide from the initial angle, if you look at the initial angle here. Of course, experienced operators know that they can go up, but if you look at the distal vessel here on the initial angle, Hard to tell whether you need to cover it or not, but by Ivus it looks like we need to cover it because there is a lot of black load there. So we s decide to go for a long metal coverage. Not much to complain about. Uh, let's do Ivus and check how far we can go up distal. So distal, okay, record. So this is the crux here. We didn't, yeah, we just, we should try to, to expand the stand. I think it has just caught, could have been a half a millimeter further down. Da brauchen wir 3,5 und da oben 4,0. Yeah. Yeah. Ja, yeah, wir können vielleicht den 4,0er weiter nach unten nehmen. Ja. Warten Sie erst mal. Proximal, it looks good. Stop. But the distal edge is not perfect. One millimeter more into the bifurcation. Let's do Ivers to confirm that and then we are done. Okay. Record. This is the bifurcation. This is the PL. And I think it's perfectly placed, yeah? A little bit in, into the PL and actually, so this is perfect and here we have some indentation. So we can go there with uh, the 4.0 and expand, yeah? A little bit away from the distal end of the struts. So this is okay. And then next thing we need to check is the ostium. So I move the catheter. Even if we lose it now, it doesn't matter too much. So it's well expanded. Yeah. yeah, it looks like it's perfect. Well. Perfect, I would say. So here, in a segment of about 25, 30 millimeters of a JCTO score, about two, I would say, the uh, approach is primarily integrate. We explored the left system, we found some collateral, so there is a bailout strategy always in the mind if the integrate doesn't work. So first we wanted to get into the proximal cap and analyze the lesion. It was not 
possible with IVIS here to get into the side branch, but the IVIS information was very helpful about the anatomy because if you go by angel, you would think it's a small artery. If you go by IVIS, you realize it's a four millimeter vessel filled up with plaque, concentric plaque, and mostly fibrotic. So we could decide to go anti-grade with a Gaia wire, middle strength wire, which went sub-intimal, and it was a good setup because we know it's a big artery for a parallel wiring. It was a very good example of parallel wiring with a confianza, a, a stiff uh, type wire, to get into the distal lumen under contralateral control. And then Ivis helped us after predilatation to confirm the placement of the stents. And if you see the final result in the diameter of the lesion, I think nobody would ever come up with such a expansion of stents and sizing of the stent if you just rely on angio. So we can just uh, put up the angio of the final shot here. And if you compare it, it's really a huge sized artery. And under Ivis guidance, we could place the stent right at the distal crux and confirmed it. And I even had, according to Ivis, add a small portion of stent distal and optimize the whole segment and achieve a maximum result for this patient. Innovation and you, Philips.